All right. So the next topic is NAT. What is NAT? As you know, it stands for Network Address Translation. As it implies, Network Address Translation is going to do the same job. It's going to translate our IP addresses. So that's the main uh, work behind NAT. It's a network networking protocol which is going to help us to translate our addresses from one address to another so that we can get the security so that nobody will be able to um, track our actual IP address. That's the main reason of this security protocol, okay? So NAT is the process of changing the source and destination IP addresses and also ports. It's not only IP addresses, it's going to help you to also change the ports. So address translation reduces the need for IPv4 public addresses and hides private network address ranges. This process is usually done by routers or you can say firewalls. So these are the two devices which will help us to translate the addresses from one IP address or from one IP address to another IP address. So we can say NAT is a process of changing, not POWES, it's process of changing the source and source and destination IP addresses and ports. This is the work of NAT. And address translation reduces the need for IPv4 public addresses and hides private network address ranges. This process is usually done by routers or firewalls. Okay? What's the concept? Now, what's the concept behind it? What's an example? Or you can say, explain to us with an example. See, if you're now using a NAT, without NAT, imagine that you are having a network of 30 computers, or you can say just five computers to better understand. Suppose that I'm having a local area network and I'm having 10 to 15 computers. Suppose that I have 10 to 15 hosts, okay? And 15 hosts are connected to one switch and then in they're connected to a router. Hosts are connected to one switch and then switch is connected to a router and then router is sharing the information to outside or to any other subnet. Now, this is the concept. See, I'm gonna draw a topology. Suppose that first of all, we have one device, one, two, three. Okay, then they are all connected to a switch. And switch is connected to a router. And then router is connected to one more router. And then router is connected to another switch. This is another subnet or another network and it's connected to 10 more computers. Okay, suppose this is IP at the 0 0.2. This is here one. Here we have another network. This is again 0 0.1, 192. It's 10.0, 0, 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's not needed to have an IP address. Now, as I've told you, we have classes of IP addresses, right? We have A class, we have B class, we have C class. And D and E are not used. D is used for multicasting and E is for experimental purposes. Who is this? All right. 
Are you here with me? Yes. yes. So this is a very important concept. Now, as I've told you, there are A class, B class, and C class. And I have told you that in each class, there are some public IP addresses and there are private IP addresses, right? Yes. Have I? I told you, right? So there are some yeah. public and private for each class of IP addresses. And I told you public class IP addresses are routable over the internet, but private are not routable over the internet, right? We cannot yes. use private IP classes like 192.160.1 over the internet. If you have to send a packet from your network to outside, it has to travel through internet. It will be working until your last gateway. After that, it will not work. So what will happen if you need to have, then you need a public IP, right? To go through that. So if you do not have net in place, so we have private IP addresses which are not routable, so there is no need of them. So we need to assign each computer a public IP. Each computer, one, there will be one IP for this, then one, one IP for this, then one IP for this. And public IPs are very costly if you purchase them. They're very much costly for each. You need to pay an amount. So it will be a stupidity if you purchase, if you have around 300, if you talk about big enterprise companies, they used to have 4,000, 5,000 machines and even in, you know, the devices. So they used to have more than 3,000 IP addresses. So they have without net. So that means they need to purchase 3,000 IP addresses for their machines, right? But now what they did, they said, no, you do not have to do anything. What you have to do, that's what NAT is. It's going to reduce the need for IPv4 public addresses. Why, how? Because it's going to hide those private IP addresses. So what we do is we have the private network here. The network is for example, 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 oblique 24. It's going to have around how many IP addresses? It's going to have 220. 254 IP addresses, right? So 254 54 IP addresses are totally not routable over the internet when they reach to this router. After that, they're not routable. So what we do is we use NAT here. We use NAT. What we do is we use to have only single particular public IP here, public IP. Suppose that public IP is going to start with, mm -hmm. 190.10.11.11. .11. This is my public IP. Okay. And over here we have suppose 178. 18.10.0. This is public IP. Over here we are going to use NAT. What it's going to do? Whenever this particular PC with the IP at the 0 0.2 is going to send a request to switch, switch will see whether it's in the same network or not. If it's not in the same network, it will forward the packet to router so when router will see automatically we have implemented NAT what is going to do it will translate that IP address and it will change the 0 0.2 IP address to this particular IP address and from this router whatever the communication is going to happen the source IP address will change and that's the reason why other people will never come to know the exact IP address of this system that's the security to your system also are you understanding Yes. So that means we can use as many IP addresses as we want in a private class, local area network that we use. That's why we are using private IP addresses within our local area network because we cannot use public. So then if you have to make your private IP addresses work properly, we should be having NAT in place. Otherwise, there's no use of private IP addresses. So then NAT is going to help us to translate those IPs. So Every particular machine when they will request to the router, so router will translate whatever the IP address you're going to have from this machine, it will translate it to this IP address. And this IP address will be changed to source and destination will be this over here. Destination will be also this, you understand? So destination IP, so at even when they request back, again, this will change the IP address back and it will send the request over here. So both ways, NAT is going to work. It's going to translate IP address back into IP, private into public, public into private.
private. So that's what is the work of network address translation. So it's going to translate your private IPs into public and public into private. That's the main reason why we need to have, why it's very important to implement or to uh, use network address translation protocol. Okay, clear? Okay. Yes. So there are types of address translation, network address translation, or you can say address translation. Now, how many types are there with the help of which we can translate the IP addresses? First is static, NAT. Second is dynamic. NAT. Third is port address translation. P O R T address translation. Okay. So these are the three types of address translations that we do have in a network that we can go through. Static that we are mostly not using. I'm going to tell you why later on. Dynamic NAT or port address translation. And it's also known as NAT overloading sometimes. This port address translation, it's also called as NAT overload. So these are the three different network address translations that we have to learn, but not today. Okay, but I'm gonna give you some brief information about them. Then we'll try to configure, or I'm gonna teach you them, how to configure them, what static NAT in deep, Introduction, I'm going to give you that in the next class. So static NAT translates one private IP address to a public. Now, you know, I told you one public IP will be used for each machine. Now here, what's static NAT? Now, even if you have the public IP here, so one particular IP address will be translated to one only, that's static. So one private IP will be translated into one public only. That's we do not want that. The public IP is always the same. The public, we do not want that thing. The public address or public IP address is always the same. It will be always the same. That's what static is. Next thing is dynamic. What's dynamic? Private IP addresses are mapped to the pool of public IP addresses. Now, we have this network, which is going to start from 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. And on a router, we can create a pool of public IP addresses. Here, we have only one public. And always, every machine will use that public, OK? That means one will be translated to one. So what is dynamic, we will be having private IP addresses for even if there are hundreds of private IP addresses, they will be mapped or mapped, sorry, it's not amped, it's mapped to the pool of the public IP addresses. When some companies are big enough, they used to purchase more than one or two IP, uh, this, uh, public IP addresses and they create a pool of them. Are you understanding? So private IP addresses are mapped to the pool of IP addresses, public IP addresses, but so for example, you have 10.0.0.2, even 0.0.24 network. So it's gonna have 25 IPs, 254 IPs. So they can use a pool of public IP addresses. What's, what do you mean by a pool? I have told you what is DHCP pool. And here also we'll be having a pool of IP addresses. It can be one, it can be two, it can be three, it can be four, it can be five. So automatically it will choose the public IPs and then from router it will forward, it will change the uh, source IP address. Suppose that we have 191.11.11.1 .11 or two starting and up to for example, 11.6, all right? This is the pool of IP addresses. So that means private IP addresses are mapped to the pool of 
public IP addresses. So every particular device can use and can take any particular IP and then send the packet or forward the packet. Router will forward the packet. Got it? Yes. Next thing is port address translation, which is something different. One public IP address is used for all internal devices, but a different port number is assigned to each IP address. Port number will be different. There will be one particular, there's no need So some, you know, here, if you purchase like six IP addresses, that there, there will be more costly. Here also there is a solution, that's port address translation. So one, like here, we are using one public IP. Here also we are using one public IP. Okay, for all the devices, for all the, uh, you know, so one public IP address will be used for all the internal devices, or you can say private IP addresses, but each particular private IP addresses will be assigned a port number. That's called as NAT overload. Are you understanding? So one particular IP address, public IP address is used, will be used for the entire network of private IP addresses. But for each particular IP address, that means for each host, a different port number will be given. So one public IP for each, but for each host, each host a different port number will be given. That's it, that's the basic information about NAT and tomorrow, not, not tomorrow, on Wednesday, we are going to start with static NAT, then we'll go with dynamic NAT, and then at last we'll go with port address translation. That's port or you can say NAT overload and with this, almost we will complete our main part of CCNA, and then we'll move to some IPv6, uh, you know, basics, and I'll show you what are the protocols that you can use or that we are using, okay? So different versions of RIP we are using, different versions of EIGRP, different version of OSPF we are using in IPv6, but you're not going to learn them all here. You can learn them in CCNP, CCIE, okay? So in the next lecture, we're going to go through all these three types of network address translations. And then we'll go through the basics of IPv6, which I have already gone through. Quickly, I'm going to just go through. And then if there is something that is uh, necessary to teach you, I will go through in the last, last few lectures. All right? Okay. All right. So it's enough for today. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, I'm going to stop the class. Is it enough? Have you any questions? No. Or do you have any questions? No? No. Okay, then I have taken the, yeah, Mrs. Islam, you need to pay the fees, otherwise there will not be any exam for you on 17. Okay. Okay? Yes. Yeah, please. So there will be exam on 17. Pay the fee by tomorrow, then only I guess there will be the exam for you. How much? 3,500, I guess. Check with the marketing, call Mr. Saleh. He will tell you how much. I guess 3,500, yes. This is the last. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye. Take care. Allah Hafiz.